It was a slow night at the cafe when Julia saw the couple walk through the door. They were soaked to the skin, dripping on her freshly mopped floor and carrying suitcases. But that wasn't what made her stare. Both women were tanned and wearing bikinis. In Montana. In November. Can I help you? Bus station is two blocks down, or do you need to call a taxi? The blonde smiled and set her luggage down. On the side of each suitcase was the word Zodiac. No, thanks. Can we just get a cup of tea? They sat at the booth nearest the door and waited expectantly. Sure thing. Coming right up. Julia readied the cups in their saucers. You guys headed somewhere? Not anymore, replied the blonde. We just arrived in town. Can you recommend a good place to stay? Maybelle's over on 2nd Street. She runs a B&B, &B and she makes a good breakfast. Mm, if you don't mind me asking, who are you here to visit? I know just about everyone around town. Maybe I could help. The taller, dark-haired woman sat quietly without responding. The blonde gave her a questioning look and told Julia, Actually, we've bought a local business on Main Street. Maybe you know it, the little black box? She took a sip of hot tea and smiled in appreciation. Julia knew it well. It had been a jewelry shop until the owners had mysteriously disappeared. That had been three, no, four years ago, last month. The sheriff had finally declared it an unsolved case, but that didn't mean the town had forgotten about it. There were theories galore. Some of them even made sense. We plan to reopen the shop and call it the Signs of the Zodiac. She looked at the silent, dark-haired woman who nodded. We specialize in products for the deaf. Suddenly, a third woman entered the cafe and walked over to the other two, using both hands to sign a message. Answering back in sign language, the blonde woman turned suddenly to Julia and asked, Have you ever signed every Zodiac sign?